Yeah. All right. So I think, Amarin, if we're ready, if you want to do a walkthrough of S155, <clears throat> and I will say again that a lot of, we, we had a draft last year that didn't really have a number, and a lot of work went into it over the summer by the commissioner and by Bill Sorrell and the uh, Criminal Justice Council and Ameren. <clears throat> so there are, um, uh, and um, Representative Colston contributed a number of suggestions that were incorporated in here. So there's a, a lot of um, input that's been put into here, into this, uh, into 155 from what we had before. So, Amarin, do you want to? Yes, for the record, Amarin Abergele, Legislative Council. Uh, so this is a lengthy bill. Uh, Madam Chair, if there's any points where you would like me to pause for questions, um, just let me know. Otherwise, I will just keep going. <laughs> well, I, I would just say that if committee members have clarification questions, but not not policy questions or anything because Amarin Am doesn't deal with those. But if you have <laughs> questions of clarification, just raise your hand or speak up. All right. Okay. So I am looking at S155, which was posted with today's materials on the committee webpage. This is an act relating to the creation of the Agency of Public Safety. Um, as Senator White mentioned, this is an updated version of the bill draft that this committee looked at to some extent last session, um, but there are changes throughout the bill. Um, so I will just do a full walkthrough as if this is all new to you. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So section one concerns the creation of the agency. This would add a chapter 69 into Title III. The chapter would be the Agency of Public Safety. Subchapter one is subdivisions. You'll see there are definitions uh, beginning on line 16 of page one, running into all the way through uh, line seven on page two. Among those, agency throughout this bill means the Agency of Public Safety. Commissioner means the head of a department responsible to the secretary for the administration of the department. So it won't just be the commissioner of public safety. You will see uh, several commissioners mentioned throughout here that would be incorporated within the agency itself. Department means any major component of the agency. Director, the head of a division of the agency, and then division uh, means a major component of a department. Um, uh, Yes, so a different level than a department. And then secretary referring to the head of the agency of human services. Excuse me, the secretary means the head of the agency of public safety, I'm sorry. Uh, section 6002 on page two, creation of the agency. The Agency of Public Safety is created for the purpose of ensuring the coordination of all state public safety resources, including reducing redundancies, increasing efficiencies, and standardizing policies, training, and data collection. Subsection B outlines all of the departments and divisions within the Agency of Public Safety. Uh, first would be the Department of Fire Safety and Emergency Management, which would include the Division of Emergency Management, the Division of Fire Safety, and the Office of Training. Uh, two would be the division <clears throat> of law enforcement, which would include the Vermont State Police, as well as the Division of Motor Vehicle Enforcement, the Division of, uh, excuse me, and then for subsection subdivision three on page three, you would have a Division of Support Services, which would report directly to the Agency of Public Safety, and the Office of Community Engagement which again would also report directly to the Agency of Public Safety. Neither of those would fall within another department. Subsection C is uh, a list of all of the boards and commissions that the agency is providing administrative support. So this would include Fire Service Training Council, Law Enforcement Advisory Board, State Police Advisory Commission, the Search and Rescue Council, the Animal Cruelty Investigation Advisory Board, 
the Electrician's Licensing Board, the Elevator Safety Review Board, the State Emergency Response Commission, the Plumber's Examining Board, the Vermont Access Board, and the Enhanced 911 Board. Section 6003, beginning at the bottom of page three, is advisory capacity, except as otherwise provided in this chapter, all boards and commissions that are a part of or attached to the agency shall be advisory only and the powers and duties of the boards and commissions, including administrative policy making and regulatory functions shall vest in and be exercised by the secretary of the agency. However, in subsection B on page four, notwithstanding subsection A of the section, Boards of registration attached to the agency shall retain and exercise all existing authority with respect to licensing and maintenance of the standards of the persons registered. Sec section 6004 is personnel designation. The secretary, deputy secretary, commissioners, deputy commissioners, attorneys, division directors, and all members of boards, committees, commissions, or councils attached to the agency are exempt from the classified state service. Um, except as authorized by section 311 of this title or otherwise by law, all positions shall be within the classified service. Subchapter two concerns the secretary. 6021, appointments and duties. The agency shall be under the direction and supervision of the secretary who shall be appointed by the governor with the advice and consent of the Senate and shall serve at the pleasure of the governor. The secretary shall oversee the activities of the Division of Support Services and the Office of Community Engagement. The secretary shall supervise the Commissioner of Fire Safety and Emergency Management and the Commissioner of Law Enforcement. 6022 Budget and Report. The secretary shall be responsible to the governor and shall plan, coordinate, and direct the functions vested in the agency. Now I'm on page five, section 6023, Deputy Secretary. Subsection A, the secretary with approval of the governor may appoint a deputy to serve at the secretary's pleasure and to perform such duties as the secretary may prescribe. The deputy shall be exempt from the classified service. The appointment shall be in writing and filed with the office of secretary of state. This is a uh, fairly standard language for deputy secretaries. Uh, subsection B, the deputy secretary shall discharge the duties and responsibilities of the secretary in the secretary's absence. In case a vacancy occurs in the office of the secretary, the deputy shall assume and discharge the duties of the office until the vacancy is filled. Section 6024, advisory councils or committees. The secretary with the approval of the governor may create such advisory councils or committees as the secretary deems necessary within the agency and appoint their members for terms not exceeding the governor's term. Section 6025, transfer of personnel and appropriations. Uh, subsection A, the secretary with the approval of governor may transfer classified positions between state departments and other components of the agency subject to personnel laws and rules. However, in subsection B, notwithstanding subsection A, members from different divisions of the Department of Law Enforcement shall not be reassigned or transferred outside their division unless the member requests the transfer and the commissioner approves the transfer. Subsection C, the secretary with the approval of the governor may transfer appropriations or parts thereof between departments and other components in the agency consistent with the purposes for which the appropriation was made. Subchapter three concerns commissioners and directors. Section 6051, commissioners, deputy commissioners appointment term. The secretary with the approval of the governor shall appoint a commissioner of each department who shall be the chief executive and administrative officer and shall serve at the pleasure of the secretary. 6052 mandatory duties. Subsection A, the commissioner shall exercise the powers and perform the duties required for the effective administration of the department. Subsection B, the commissioner with the approval of the governor shall so organize and arrange the department as will best and most efficiently promote its work and carry out the objectives of this chapter. The commissioner may formulate, put into effect, alter and repeal rules for the administration of the department. Subsection C, in addition to other duties imposed by law, the commissioner shall one, administer the laws assigned to the department two, coordinate and integrate the work of the divisions, and three, supervise and control all staff functions. Emeryn, can I just stop for a minute here? And say, this is pretty standard 
um, yes, yes. for commissioners and secretaries, right? I mean, this isn't right. going outside of what we norm commissioners and secretaries normally do. This is standard, relatively yes. standard. Yes. Okay, just wanted to make that clear. I would say uh, subsection C is probably just the slightly more specific language from page six into page seven, because it's talking about the um, administering the laws assigned to the department. So that is specific to this agency in some respects. Uh, section 6053, permissive duties, approval of secretary. The commissioner may, with the approval of the secretary, transfer classified positions within or between divisions subject to state personnel laws and rules. Two, cooperate with the fe appropriate federal agencies and administer federal funds in support of programs within the department. Three, submit plans and reports and in other respects comply with federal laws and regulations that pertain to the programs administered by the department. Four, make rules and policies consistent with law for the internal administration of the department and its programs. Five, appoint a deputy commissioner. Six, provide training and instructions for any employees of the department at the expense of the department in educational institutions or other places. And lastly, organize, reorganize, transfer, or abolish divisions, staff functions, or sections within the department. Uh, this next one is specific to <clears throat> the commissioner of the Department of Law Enforcement. Uh, so with the approval of the secretary, the commissioner may designate or change the rank or grade to be held by a member in accordance with the rules adopted by the commissioner, assign or transfer members within a division to serve at such stations and to perform such duties as the commissioner shall designate, and C, determine what certified law enforcement officers other than state police officers shall give bonds and prescribe the conditions and amount. And then once again, as you saw, similar language to above, um, subsec uh, excuse me, subsection C, notwithstanding anything to the contrary in this chapter, the divisions within the Department of Law Enforcement shall not be abolished or transferred, and members from different divisions of the Department of Law Enforcement shall not be reassigned or transferred outside their division unless the, remember, the member requests the transfer and the commissioner approves the transfer. Section 6054, directors. A, a director shall administer each division within the agency. The commissioners with the approval of the secretary shall appoint the directors for divisions that are part of the department and the secretary shall appoint any other directors whose appointment is not otherwise governed by law. Each division and its officers shall be under the direction and control of the appointing authority, except with regard to quasi judicial acts or duties vested in them by law. This is fairly standard um, language I would say for directors. Subsection B, no rule or policy may be issued by a director of a division without the approval of the appointing authority. Moving on to subchapter four on page nine, this is where you start seeing more of the breakout between the different departments and divisions within the agency. So section 6081 uh, creates the Department of Law Enforcement. Section 6082, creates the Department of Fire Safety and Emergency Management, and also specifies that the Commissioner of Fire Safety and Emergency Management as Fire Marshal shall be responsible for enforcing the laws pertaining to the investigation of fires, <clears throat> the prevention of fires, the promotion of fire safety, and the delivery of fire service training. Section 6083 creates the Division of Support Services uh, this division is administered by the Deputy Secretary of the agency and provides the following services to the agency, <clears throat> including uh, personnel administration, financing and accounting activities, coordination of filing and records maintenance activities, provision of facilities, office space and equipment and the care thereof, requisitioning from the Department of Buildings and General Services, supplies, equipment and other requirements, management improvement services, training, including diversity, equity, and inclusion training, communications, including dispatch and radio technology, fleet services, um, information systems and technology, including the Vermont Crime Information Center and the Sex Offender Registry, grant management, and then any other administrative functions assigned by the secretary. Other provisions of the law notwithstanding, all administrative service functions are delegated to other components of the agency shall be performed within the agency uh, by the Division of Support Services. Uh, next, 6084 is the Office of Community Engagement. 
the Office of Community Engagement is created within the agency. It is to be administered by the Deputy Secretary. The Office of Community Engagement shall, now I'm moving into page 11, one, create and execute a process to engage public safety stakeholders in the development of key agency policies with broad stakeholder interest. Create and maintain a variety of mechanisms for community feedback and engagement regarding the operations of the public safety system. And three, maintain a list of relevant public safety stakeholders. So <clears throat> that was all section one of this bill, which outlines the creation of this agency and its various components. Section two, um, it, you may recall from last year, there is anticipated that there will be um, sort of a staged transition for some of these current divisions and departments um, into the agency over a period of, I would say, a year and a half to two years. Senator Colmore? Um, yes. Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I don't mean to interrupt you, and I'm just trying to, in my mind, get the schematic, if you will, settled and wonder how different it is from what currently exists. So as I understand it, there is a department which sets above everything else. Then under the department, there are divisions. And under the divisions, there are, um, well, under the divisions, there's commissioners and deputy commissioners. And then there are directors underneath them. But sitting on top of all of it is the secretary and deputy secretary of the agency. Am I recapturing? And, and it's not. Well, let me start with what currently exists. That would be helpful. <laughs> so right now you have the Department of Public Safety, right, within the, um, and within the Department of Public Safety, you have both the state police as well as fire safety and management. All of those are currently at the, within a department. Right. So this would uh, sort of remove all of those current structures you would have a new agency, not a department, um, but a new agency that's overseeing a new department of law enforcement, which is where the state police would reside. You would have a new department of fire safety, which previously was underneath, was a division of a department. So that, so the fire uh, safety and management would become its own department. Law enforcement would be its own department. And then you would also have uh, two more um, not, departments, but divisions, you would have the, excuse me, not, yeah, not departments, but sort of divisions, you would have the Office of Community Engagement and the Division of Support Services, which both directly are administered by the Deputy Secretary. So, and then in addition to that new structure, this would also take some pieces of other public safety um, functions that are currently outside of the Department of Public Safety and move them into the new agency, right? You would have the E911 board. Um, you would be taking the law enforcement division from the Department of Motor Vehicles that would also be moving over. So I think uh, for the committee's discussion next time, I will just map out sort of what the current structure is and what this new structure is so you can visualize it. It is hard to visualize it without seeing it on paper. Um, because some of the names remain the same, um, but have either been shifted or elevated uh, within an organizational structure. Thank you. I would appreciate that. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. So I will continue on. So now we're moving into some of those sections that uh, govern how this transition will happen. So first in section two, we're talking about the transition of the enhanced 911 board. So the enhanced 911 board um, in section two, this authorizes all of the, the financial assets and liabilities that are currently with the enhanced 911 board, um, including any appropriations. All of those would be moved over into the agency of public safety when the E911 board becomes part of the agency. Um, this would also authorize positions, equipments, and supplies and inventory. Similarly, to move over, this is fairly standard language for incorporating um, a separate uh, component of government into a new component of government. Um, then subsection C, the enhanced 911 board shall have the administrative, technical, and legal assistance of the agency of public safety. 
and then the rules of the Enhanced 911 Board shall become a subtitle under the rules of the Agency of Public Safety. So you will see a similar type of transition section on page 12. This is concerning the transition of the Department of Motor Vehicles Enforcement Officers. <clears throat> Once again, uh, subsection A is about the transfer of duties, obligations, responsibilities of those law enforcement officers at the DMV over into the Agency of Public Safety um, within, and once again, the Division of Motor Vehicle Enforcement that's currently at the DMV would be moved into the Department of Law Enforcement within the agency. Subsection B, all financial assets and liabilities of the DMV Enforcement Division, including appropriations, would be transferred over to the Agency of Public Safety. Uh, subsection C, all authorized positions, functions, equipment, supplies, inventory of those officers, again, would be moved over to the agency. Subsection D, the certified law enforcement officers shall maintain their relationships with and support of the Department of Motor Vehicles other components of federal, state, and municipal government and private sector collaborations. On page 13, we have general transition provisions. Section four, the Secretary of Public Safety shall coordinate with the Secretary of Administration, the Commissioner of Finance and Management, the Commissioner of Human Resources, the Executive Director of the Criminal Justice Council, the Chair of the Criminal Justice Council, the Executive Director of the E911 Board, the Secretary of uh, the Agency of Transportation and the commissioners of the Departments of Motor Vehicles, Fish and Wildlife, and Liquor of Liquor and Lottery, and their directors of enforcement as necessary to enable the organizational modernization and most efficient operation of state law enforcement divisions and resources. <clears throat> so beginning on page 13, line 13. This is where we start getting into some of the uh, statutory corrections that, or I should say uh, conforming changes to current law to reflect that the transition is being of the E911 board, E91, excuse me, E911 board uh, from where it currently sits into the agency. Uh, so you'll see section 7052 of Title 30 in Section 5 is being amended um, to point out that the board shall advise on and assist the secretary with the selection of the executive director of the E911 board. Uh, previously, the board appointed subject to approval of the governor. <clears throat> and then You'll see on page 14, the executive director shall submit a budget to the secretary. The executive director shall not be under the direction and control of the, excuse me, did I say the secretary? The executive director shall not be under the direction and control of the secretary, except with regard to the budget and other administrative functions given to the director or the board by law. Section six is, uh, once again, is referring to the E911 board. Um, most of these are conforming changes, referencing the new chapter uh, 69 in subsection A, noting that the uh, board shall consult with the Agency of Human Services, the Agency of Public Safety, as the Department of Public Safety would no longer exist. Um, and then those are all, and so moving into page 15, so those are the changes that we just looked at for the E911 board. Next, we're moving into the statutory changes regarding the motor vehicle enforcement officers. So this would, section seven would amend section one of title 23. Uh, again, making a change of the word commissioner to the secretary of public safety. And this is, I believe a requested change from the Department of Public Safety to this statute. So this would remove, cooperate and carrying out all the statutes and rules adopted to implement the provisions of this title. Um, and in case of agreement as to division of work, the governor shall decide and instead implements a system where the commissioner of motor vehicles and the secretary of public safety would enter into a memorandum of understanding to ensure that enforcement needs of the DMV the Agency of Public Safety uh, Division 
<clears throat> of motor vehicle enforcement are achieved. Section eight uh, amends this section so that references to commissioner, which is currently commissioner of public safety, would then be a reference to the commissioner of the Agency of Public Safety Department of Law Enforcement. So then on page 16, we have statutory changes for the Department of Public Safety um, no longer existing and they're instead being an agency of public safety. So some of those references where you see a uh, within statute where you see a reference to the commissioner of public safety will need to be amended so that it's the commissioner of law enforcement within the agency of public safety. So section nine amends section 2101 of title three. A cabinet is created within the executive branch of government that shall consist of secretaries of such agencies as are created by law, as well as such commissioners of the departments created by law as the governor in the governor's discretion shall appoint to be a member of the cabinet. Section 10, uh, the Vermont Emergency Management Division. This is in Title 20, Section 3. There is hereby created within the Agency of Public Safety, Department of Fire Safety and Emergency Management, a division to be known as the Vermont em Emergency Management Division. Section 11 changes Section 1871 of Title 20 uh, concerning contracting. You'll see, you'll see there's the deletion of the language around there being a Department of Public Safety and a Commissioner of Public Safety. And then moving into page 17, this would now read that the Commissioner of Law Enforcement and then goes through uh, how the Commissioner of Law Enforcement would be able to contract for security and related traffic control. Uh, subsection B, the Commissioner of Law Enforcement shall collect fees for the termination of alarms. And the remaining changes are all subsection renumbering based on those changes all the way down through to page 19. You'll see where there are references to Commissioner of Public Safety. Those are changed to the Commissioner of Law Enforcement. <clears throat> and now I am down onto page 20 in section 12. Uh, this is a new section from the last time you saw this bill. Uh, this amends section 1872 of Title 20. This deletes the language saying that the commissioner of, currently the commissioner of uh, public safety would serve as the fire marshal uh, because at present the division of, uh, excuse me, the Yes, the Division of Fire Management and Emergency Services is currently within the Department of Public Safety. So with the Division of Fire Management and Emergency Services becoming its own department, that title of fire marshal will travel with fire management and emergency services and not remain with the Commissioner of Law Enforcement. Section 13 amends section 1874 of title 20, talking about organization of department by commissioner. Once again, we're adding, we're changing the language here. So it's not the commissioner of public safety, but it would be a commissioner of law enforcement who would need the approval of the governor and the secretary of the agency of public safety um, <clears throat> shall organize the department of law enforcement um, again, a reference over to chapter 69, the new chapter 69, <clears throat> which is the creation of the agency. Um, so I would say those are mostly conforming changes for the new agency. Uh, looking at section 14 on page 21, this amends title 20, section 1883, state law enforcement memorandum of understanding. So subsection A, in anticipation of consolidating all certified law enforcement resources into the agency of public safety, the secretary of public safety shall develop, and then it goes into the memorandum of stand, understanding <clears throat> that currently exists between the uh, agency of, excuse me, the department of public safety and those other uh, departments, fish and wildlife, motor vehicle, and liquor and lottery. 
and then the member memorandum of understanding it removed the uh, requirement that it's reviewed at least every two years uh, but kept in uh, the majority of what the memorandum of understanding should address um, consolidating collective resources and reducing or eliminating redundancies and implement, implementing a methodology that will enhance overall coordination and communication and standardize training and policies while supporting the mission of individual enforcement divisions. Um, there are some minor word changes in subdivision two. Uh, removal of the word interagency for, and just to say ensure cooperation and collaboration. And changing the words individual enforcement agencies to individual enforcement divisions. This would repeal subdivision three, which creates a task force, uh, creating a task force concept that will provide for the sharing and disseminating of information and recommendations involving various levels of statewide law enforcement through Vermont that will benefit all law enforcement agencies as well as citizens. <clears throat> New subdivision three, developing an integrated and coordinated approach with the goal of creating a force multiplier to be coordinated through the new Agency of Public Safety Department of Law Enforcement. Subdivision four, providing for the Secretary of Public Safety with the approval of the governor in accordance with the state emergency management plan to assume the role of lead coordinator of statewide law enforcement unit event, units in the event of elevated alerts, critical incidents, and all hazard events. <clears throat> And that is it for outlining portions of the memory, excuse me, components of the memorandum of understanding. Moving on to section 15 on page 23. This would amend subchapter two of chapter 113 in title 20 around certified law enforcement officers, specifically section 1911, uh, examinations, appointment, promotion, probation, you'll see that there's the deletion in some instances of the term state police to instead say certified law enforcement officers assigned to the Department of Law Enforcement. <clears throat> then in addition, where certified law enforcement officer positions support the work of agencies or departments outside the Agency of Public Safety, the commissioner, and in this instance, we're talking about the commissioner of law enforcement, shall consult the agencies or departments concerning the qualifications for the positions. All certified law enforcement officers assigned to the Department of Law Enforcement shall be on probation for one year from the date of first appointment. Next would be some changes to section 1912, bond and oath. Again, replacing uh, the term state police to say that it is all certified law enforcement officers assigned to the Department of Law Enforcement. <clears throat> Those are the changes on the bottom of page 23. Um, and then we just have some style changes on the top of page 24, capitalizing terms. Then into section 1913, uniforms and equipment, once again, replacing the term state police with certified law enforcement officers assigned to the department. And once again, the commissioner shall consult with agencies and departments that are supported by certified law enforcement officers assigned to the Department of Law Enforcement on the uniforms and equipment necessary for these positions. And this is in recognition of uh, other divisions that were, are not currently within the Department of Public Safety, such as the law enforcement officers who are currently at the DMV who would be moving over. This term would now encapsulate all of those certified law enforcement officers uh, within the Department of Law Enforcement. There's some drafting sort of style guide changes towards the bottom of 24. <clears throat> and then on to page 25, section 1914, powers and immunities, the commissioner of law enforcement and once again, all certified law enforcement officers assigned to the department. And then again, later, same replacement of the term state police with certified law enforcement officers assigned to the department. 
Section 16 is amending Section 1933 of Title 20 around DNA sample required. On page 26, uh, specifying that we're meaning the Commissioner of Law Enforcement, not the Commissioner of Public Safety. Section 17, again, is the changing Section 2352 of Title 20 to specify the Commissioner of Law Enforcement, not the Commissioner of Public Safety. <clears throat> Section 18 repeals uh, the Department of Public Safety listed as a component, um, well, of where it is currently listed, because there would no longer be a Department of Public Safety. So that would repeal that language. And then conforming revisions, now in section 19, this would authorize the Office of Legislative Counsel to make revisions throughout the statutes as needed for consistency with this act, so long as, as long as the revisions have no effect on the meaning of the affected statutes. So in this instance, it would be replacing Department of Public Safety with Department of Law Enforcement. Um, and revisions that are substantially similar to that. For example, replacing commissioner of public safety to commissioner of law enforcement, so long as it is otherwise consistent with this bill. Uh, section 20 on page 27, this is a report requirement. On or before November 15th, 2022, the secretary of the Agency of Public Safety shall report to the governor. The leadership of the General Assembly and the House and Senate committees on government operations and on judiciary on the status of the organizational transition and recommend any legislative changes needed to continue the orderly and efficient organizational transition of the Agency of Public Safety. And then subsection, excuse me, uh, subsection B, the secretary shall study the effectiveness, efficacy, efficiency, and delivery of state public safety law enforcement services and shall report to the governor and the General Assembly on or before October 15th, 2023, on the feasibility and advisability of transferring the operations of the Department of Fish and Wildlife certified law enforcement officers, the Department of Liquor and Lottery certified law enforcement officers, the Capitol Police and the Department of Labor relating to VOSHA project work safe and tramway safety, excuse me, passenger tramway safety to the Agency of Public Safety. Subsection C, on or before November 15th, 2023, the secretary shall report to the governor, the leadership of the General Assembly and the House and Senate committees on government operations and on judiciary on the status of the organizational transition and recommend any legislative changes needed to continue an orderly and efficient organizational transition. <clears throat> so section 21 is effective dates. You may recall when we were looking at a very early draft, uh, which was a bit longer, it had a, a different method of implementing um, these statutes. In order to uh, make this a bit easier to read, what I've done here is I have included basically all of the legislation as it will look uh, by 2023 within this bill, but the effective date section specifies when certain components will be added into the statute. So what you have see, what you see now is the whole of it as it will look if all of this is implemented over the next two years. Um, but you'll see in the effective date section, so the creation of the uh, of the agency, would take place on July 1st, 2022. Um, but you'll see that the E911 board and the uh, motor vehicle enforcement division officers would transition July 1st, 2023. So it's sort of a, a two-part transition, one to create the agency and um, eliminate the current Department of Public Safety and um, and make those changes to uh, making the Department of Law Enforcement, the Department of uh, Fire Safety and Emergency Management, the Division of Support Services, and the Office of Community Engagement. And then after a year, you would have the incorporation of the E911 board, as well as the law enforcement officers that are currently over at the DMV. And then, from the report section, you'll see that you would be 
receiving a report concerning uh, the the possibility or feasibility of incorporating additional law enforcement officers that are not addressed in this bill, um, such as those at Liquor and Lottery, at Fish and Wildlife, um, I believe the Capitol Police and um, certain officers with the Department of Labor. That was very lengthy. Thank you for sticking with me. <laughs> so um, committee members, are there any clarification questions? Now, not questions about why we're doing something or what the impact will be or anything, because we'll hear that from um, people who are going to testify both for and against this, but are there any questions of clarification? Amran, I think you did a super job of it. Oh, you've gone on mute, Senator. <laughs> oh, I, yes, I moved my papers. And did you hear me ask if anybody had questions of clarification? And I think I went on mute, right? As I was saying oh, that Amran did a great you. job of explaining. <laughs> okay, good. We heard all that. Okay. And you did, Amarin, thank you. You're welcome. So if I don't see any questions of clarification, um, what I think I'll do is have my Commissioner Sherling talk to us and then um, Bill Sorrell about the, and, and we will be hearing from a number of other people I know. So if you would like to um, talk to us excuse me about this commissioner that would be great certainly um good afternoon and for the record mike sherling commissioner of uh, public safety uh, I, uh unless the committee feels the need for me to go into the same level of depth that we were in really for the last two sessions but certainly during the last one we've been working on this uh since i arrived at public safety in the fall of 2019 uh in large part i'll uh, just direct the committee's attention to the fact that uh, the organization of public safety assets in Vermont uh, has been a topic of discussion uh, and the subject of many reports, uh, studies, et cetera, uh, launched from a variety of different um, angles, both legislative, executive branch, external consultants, Vermont League of Cities and Towns, uh, and it's been studied um, approximately two dozen times since 1969. Uh, there are two main sort of avenues that those studies have taken. Uh, one uh, goes toward uh, the regionalization of safety services to increase efficiencies and um, create sustainable models in a rural state. The other is the um, organization of the, the state government public safety assets. And uh, this one speaks primarily to the latter. Um, the, the overarching goals are to bring a variety of things that uh, overlap but aren't um, cohabitated in state government to, to modernize the way that we, we organize those assets to be the most efficient and effective for Vermonters. Um, the, um, there's a variety of ways that that happens. Um, and ultimately, uh, while it won't save any money up front, we do believe that it could flatten the growth curve of the investments that we make in public safety operations uh, on, uh, an, on an annual basis uh, going forward. Um, it not only uh, reorganizes for better efficiency uh, of operations, um, reduces duplication, and uh, makes efficient use of the limited taxpayer resources that are in play, uh, but it also provides better support um, if it's crafted uh, properly uh, to, to public safety operations in, um, uh, in a variety of arenas, um, it, to include those that, that aren't even contemplated to come in here. So, uh, as we, for example, um, create more stability and consistency with the way we approach communications, uh, communications infrastructure, engineering, and the operations of our, uh, of our communication centers and the underlying networks, that provides better support to emergency medical services, which is in the Department of Health, and there is no, uh, no plans that I'm, uh, that I'm aware of uh, to fold that into an agency of public safety at any point in the future. Uh, so not only does it provide additional stability, efficiency, uh, and support to the entities that are touched by 
the reorganization, but uh, also to, to some that exist outside of the reorganization. Uh, another area that uh, of focus here is to adopt a, a mindful, equitable, and, and fair, and most importantly, uh, along those lines, a reproducible system uh, of criminal justice and public health service delivery. So we take a variety of components of state government and we, um, we bolt them together and take the best parts of each and replicate the best parts of each across the entire agency. Uh, if implemented uh, correctly uh, and as we envision it uh, being done. Um, an example of that is uh, in, uh, and this isn't part of the, the um, of what's being contemplated in this, in this initial round, but uh, by way of example, the uh, data analysis that's done in the Department of Liquor Control in their enforcement division um, has some very creative and innovative um, components. And simultaneously in the state police, the fair and impartial policing unit uh, and the co-managers there have a robust program uh, in place that isn't in place in other uh, components of the, the system uh, throughout state government. So taking, th those are just two examples of taking sort of the, the best practice from disparate components and uh, leveraging the assets together to create better outcomes for Vermonters um, by sharing those resources uh, under one umbrella. Uh, important again to note that uh, in this iteration, DLC is not envisioned to move, but it was a, a sort of a top of mind uh, example that I had. A uh, little tiny bit of history, the uh, prior runs at this have, or prior efforts to execute this kind of a plan have failed for two reasons. They have been efforts at saving money in an arena where we don't spend enough already in public safety operations. Generally, um, we have under invested for decades. Uh, we're not suggesting that we increase the investment, rather we're suggesting that by creating better efficiencies, you actually get more out of each dollar that's spent. So a couple of examples unifying the way uh, information technology and all the security overlays that go with that occur, uh, security of facilities and having single system instead of multiple systems across state government, um, facility sharing uh, and equipment sharing. So what, one of the things that I, I've talked about last year was the fact that we buy specialty vehicles across in mul multiple different verticals in state government and we paint specific agency or even division emblems on them rather than buying an asset and sharing it across multiple divisions or departments uh, of state government, whether that's in the fire service or um, in, uh, in law enforcement operations or elsewhere. So sharing those assets, sharing radio infrastructure, uh, all those kinds of things have economies of scale uh, that allow you to leverage limited dollars for better outcomes uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the other reason that the, these uh, initiatives have failed is because they have been historically seen as folding in public safety assets into the Vermont State Police. That is exactly the opposite of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to break off the law enforcement components and actually create uh, under this construct an additional layer of supervision and accountability in a secretary's office. So not only would you have a commissioner, but you'd also have a secretary and you'd compartmentalize the law enforcement assets, again, being able to share the, the, the key components um, that I've described previously, but while not having them be subservient to other components of the operation. And we very mindfully uh, in our version of this uh, last year, and again, in the one that Ameren has um, so deftly constructed, puts those in a division of support services that by, its, uh, by the very way that it's organized, it actually elevates it above both the uh, Department of Law Enforcement and the Department of uh, Fire Safety and Emergency Management, specifically so that those key operational support services don't get sublimated to either one of the departments. And that's done by having a deputy secretary who put in a very rudimentary way, outranks the commissioners, um, is the one who runs those support services. So ensuring that those support services um, can can be both inward facing, but also outward facing to support statewide public safety operations from one end of the state to the other. Uh, 
And I take that opportunity to uh, also refer the committee back to our modernization strategy from early 2020, which has been um, modified a bit, but still has the same general constructs. And one of the core tenets of that uh, strategy is for uh, the, the department, hopefully eventually the agency of public safety to be even more focused on providing requisite supports for emergency operations, uh, first responders and public safety organizations throughout the state through uh, radio infrastructure, technology, and a host of other things that historically they've had to pay for uh, in, in many instances, we're trying to strip away some of those costs and have them be fundamental to the operations of um, state infrastructure uh, in general. Um, there are sort of nuances around uh, each uh, department or division that I can get into, but I think Ameren has um, very adequately sort of walked you through the nuts and bolts of how they will function and rather than spend you know, th 30 minutes walking you through each one and, and sort of the highlights, it, it may make more sense at the, at the chair's discretion for me to answer uh, operational questions in those arenas. <laughs> Thank you. I think that that does make more sense. And I'd like to make one comment and, one, and then one question for you and then open it up to the committee members for questions. So, you mentioned that uh, this has, there have been efforts for quite some time, but they have failed. And I will say that per, I personally have been working on this issue since Keith Flynn was the commissioner under Governor Shumlin. So it, it, um, this is not a new concept for any of us. Then my question is, you said that the, the reports generally pointed to two two paths that we could follow, one of um, kind of the reorganization of the, the department and the other uh, regional approach to um, providing law enforcement. And the, following this first does not preclude um, a, working on regional approach to law enforcement. Am I right about that? That's exactly right, Senator. They're, uh, they're two different paths, but they're parallel, not, uh, they're not alternates. It's not a one or the other. Uh, I don't think that any, I'm not aware of anyone ever suggesting that the state should take over law enforcement or fire safety uh, or emergency management for the entire state and all 251 municipalities. The organization of state assets has always been envisioned, uh, if done correctly, to provide better supports to the than hundreds of other agencies that exist on a local or county level throughout the state. And the regionalization studies have all been about how do you do sort of exactly what we're describing in state government, except do it regionally around Vermont. So not just law enforcement, but fire service, uh, emergency communications, uh, emergency medical services, sharing assets and leveraging um, the economy of scale by creating uh, basically fewer, um, larger operations than having you know, potentially 251 smaller scale operations, which have to then replicate every component of their operating environment 251 times instead of sharing um, the assets and the ability to do administrative and management tasks, apparatus, uh, all those kinds of things. And we've seen some great examples of that happening around Vermont, but it, it's, not, it's certainly not ubiquitous. Right, and we will, um, I don't wanna go too into the weeds on that, that approach, that regional approach, because we will be taking that up out, outside of this conversation in a different conversation, we'll be continuing that conversation. And so, I, if I may, I should oh, just say for the record, we're at the Department of Public Safety, our position on regionalization is, it is a valuable thing for communities to explore. Um, it doesn't, but there, beyond that, uh, we're supportive of it and we'll do whatever we can to help people facilitate it if they decide that it's the right choice for them. But it's not something that I think is our role to specifically push with one uh, exception that I'm sure we're gonna get to later in the, in the session. Yes, yes, but I don't want us to go there now because we really need to look at this organizational bill. So committee members, um, does anybody have any questions for the commissioner? Um, yes, Senator Rom Hinsdale. 
was just waiting to see if anybody else did. Um, first of all, Commissioner, I just want you to know on the State Police Advisory Commission website, four of the six members have terms that have expired. So I'm not sure if the term dates need to be updated or the members of the commission. Thanks for flagging that. I, I think it's uh, it's largely the uh, need to update the website, but we'll get into that and figure it out. Yes, we have talked about that before. Um, and so that was from my a departure point on the um, complaint investigative process page, which looks like it's in the Division of Internal Affairs. Right now, there's an internal investigation that goes up the chain of command and ultimately the commissioner has the last word on an investigation and whether or not there was misconduct found. How would that change um, or stay the same in an agency? We've gone back and forth on that. And I actually would refer to Amarin relative to what the final draft uh, of, of this bill says. Uh, but the ultimate answer, Senator, is it could be either. You could stop at the commissioner of law enforcement, or you could um, elevate that to the secretary's level, or you could bifurcate it in a way that it's based on severity. So uh, at, the, at the General Assembly's discretion, uh, I think you could do either one. But I defer to Amarin for how it's currently drafted. Cameron. Um, I'm sorry, Senator Ron Hinsdale, where? <laughs> I'm looking on the website. I, I, okay. Without looking at the, as you discussed, kind of a side by side, I don't know where in the language right now it says what would happen to independent and or I, it's we're not really independent, but what would happen to internal investigation of uh, misconduct? I may have oh. the answer, Amber, and I think it actually would, because it's not specifically drafted in here, it would lie at the end where the replacement language for commissioner um, in that section would likely be replaced with the commissioner of law enforcement, but we could specify that to be the, the secretary. And uh, maybe Amber has a different thought, but that, that's my read as I look at the bottom of this. That would be, yes, I believe that would be the case. This is not addressed specifically in the bill, which means that to the extent that it's currently outlined in statute that that authority ultimately rests with the commissioner of public safety, it would then it would then translate to the commissioner of law enforcement. Okay. And has there been any consideration of giving that investigation authority over to the criminal justice council instead, depending on the level of severity? There hasn't, and the, the primary reason for that is their parallel track. So the Criminal Justice Council needs to maintain its independence rather, relative to the licensing component. Uh, so for the severe events, uh, they get a, uh, a, another level of review relative to licensing. So they're parallel things, and I don't know that we'd want to co-locate them. And how many complaints were made public in the last year? It says there's discretion from the commissioner to make public. Comp Great question. You can that you can see that right on our website. Um, we uh, when I arrived, one of the things that I wanted to do was make the um, the outcomes of all the internal investigations uh, public. While well, we're prohibited to in releasing certain components by statute, we now release every six months uh, a breakdown of all the complaints, the nature of that complaint, and the outcome. Um, and they're the last, I think we've been doing that now for 18 months. I've been here for two years. Um, so there should be three reports available on the Department of Public Safety or State Police uh, website. I can send you a link. I just have to find it. That would be great because there's no link in the investigative page itself or the, the complaint page. There's, it's not like it's linked right there, um, which I think would be helpful. So I'm going to... Um... Unless there are more, I uh, guess, technical questions for the commissioner, I'm going to jump to Bill Sorrell because I'm aware that at 315, we are supposed to be walking through the planning office, um, Bill. Um, and I, I, I would say that we're going to have a lot of discussion on this. This isn't our only chance. So I have a lot more questions, so I can hold them for another day. <laughs> okay, thank you. So well, thank you. 
Thank you, Senator. Yep. And uh, let me first uh, clarify that I had a bit of trouble using the link to get in. And I think I was maybe a minute. I didn't get on until like a minute or two into Ameren's going through the bill. So I was listening carefully. I didn't realize, quite frankly, that this was a new bill, different from the one we were discussing last spring. And so let me put in a request that uh, Emeryn send me a draft of this bill that's being discussed today. Uh, but in listening to Emeryn go through the bill, I only heard one reference to the Criminal Justice Council, and it was sort of late in, uh, late in the bill, and I didn't directly follow the provision that referenced the council. Uh, and so again, I would like to see a draft and have an opportunity to speak to the, uh, uh, the committee ag again, if, if on behalf of the council, we have concerns about this draft bill, I, I would just say that, uh, you know, on the issue of whether there should be created an agency of public safety, uh, the Criminal Justice Council, uh, we did not ask the council, or I did not ask the council, and the council took no position on that. The council, at least all the members of the council who spoke to the issue of an agency of public safety, they spoke on the issue of the independence of the council from being within the umbrella of the agency of public safety and for a variety of different reasons uh, council members thought the independence was important not just in fact independence but the appearance of independence and quite frankly there's been a couple of things since uh, uh, you recessed last spring uh, one, we found out about a bill that came out of uh, uh, house institutions that put a lot of responsibilities on the council as it relates to both the training and disciplining of corrections employees. And we were very surprised to hear that. And it was an ambitious time frame That has slowed down, uh, which is a good thing. I, the council feels strongly that uh, an optimum running correction system is a hugely important component of a criminal justice system, but that bill was sort of putting things together at warp speed and uh, council really did not have time to do justice to it. And I'm not sure that corrections uh, did either. And the other thing I would say underscoring or another issue underscoring the, the uh, preference for not only independence in fact, but independence in appearance of the council from an agency of public safety. I know that there is a Senate bill that's it's either in draft form, maybe it's been introduced, uh, uh, but th that bill would give the council a very real role in investigating uh, uses of deadly force uh, by Vermont law enforcement. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure where that draft is at and such, but that, that's going to take some real homework on the part of the council to see if we can take on anything resembling those responsibilities. We are the final arbiter on professional misconduct cases of all state law enforcement. And uh, uh, and if if we were to have a, a separate responsibility in the use of force arena, that would be uh, uh, that would be a big 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 load on 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 the council. So, but I think it does again underscore uh, the council's views that uh, if if we are independent of an agency of public safety, that that is good. Uh, uh, in appearance and substantively. So I'm going to just um, comment here that the uh, reference to the uh, Criminal Justice Council in this bill only replace, currently the Commissioner of Public Safety is a member of the yes. council. 
and all it does is replaces the Commissioner of Public Safety with the Commissioner of Law Enforcement. Well, I'm going to sleep better tonight, Senator. That's the only. <laughs> so, uh, and I and I do understand that there are other issues that we need to deal with around discipline and responsibilities and everything, but they are connected to other bills. So I don't want us to get too into the weeds with those right now. But right. Um, Senator Clarkson, did you have a question? Yeah, I, I just like a clarification just because uh, what's going on in Springfield at the moment, I'm just curious, Bill, whether the council is responsible for all internal uh, investigations for, of, of, of police officers? And if so, why is a department having to hire outside detectives to do that work? Uh, those are good questions. One, I'm not familiar with the Springfield case that you uh, discuss. Uh -huh. And actually, I won't be familiar with the case unless and until there is ultimately an appeal to the full council. We have a committee of, uh, on professional regulation. It is a committee that meets weekly. Uh, we have had as many as 50 active cases before that committee. When there is an allegation of professional misconduct against a state law enforcement officer, no matter constable up to the to the colonel of the state police we are to be apprised of the allegation then kept in the loop on the investigation and what decision is made at the local level uh, on uh, whether there's been misconduct and if there's to be discipline what is the discipline that all needs to gets referred to our uh, committee uh, on professional regulation. They take a look, one, at the quality of the investigation that was done uh, at the local level and determine whether there should be more investigation. It could be sent back for more investigation if that's the view of the committee. But you, the legislature, in its last session authorized a full-time investigator for the, the council. And that I believe is being advertised uh, right now or will be by sometime this week or next. It's over at a Department of HR. Uh, so, uh, and, and because there's an appeal from decisions by our professional regulation committee to the full council, only the, the council members of, on the five person uh, professional regulation subcommittee are familiar with cases that are before that committee right now. We just know numbers, we don't know names and, and whatever. And it's because if there is a public hearing before the council on an appeal, we want the council members other than those on professional regulation to be in a position to vote and want me as chair to be able to preside over that hearing. So I don't know names or specifics of cases that are have been reported to the council, but are solely within the, uh, within the confines of the uh, uh, public reg professional regulation committee. So I'm going to suggest that we are going to hear from the Criminal Justice Council about their reorganization, where they are, all of these things. But, um, and, and I know everything in public safety and law enforcement is intertwined with each other, but the bill before- You just muted yourself again. I. I I think that when I shuffle my papers, it hits the bar. And I know that everything is intertwined and is related to each other, but I wanna remind us that this bill, 155, is really just a reorganization bill. It right. doesn't deal with discipline. It doesn't deal with um, uh, certification. It doesn't deal with um, any of that. It is simply a reorganization bill. 
I, I appreciate it, Madam Chair. I just, you know, the antenna, when Bill was speaking, I just had to ask him while he was here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get that. I just don't a bird wanna... in the, you know, a bird in the hand is a, bird... <laughs> a bill in the hand. <laughs> a bill in the hand, exactly. I just want to make sure that we don't go down those those rabbit holes um, because there are a million I, things I that we need to do around um, law enforcement, and they include um, all the model policies that are coming out, which have nothing to do with this bill itself. This is purely a reorganization bill. And the only reason we would um, address any of those in relation to this, I believe, is if they, if somehow changing the organizational structure has an impact on those issues. And uh, so I, I just want us to be really clear about that. <laughs>